night, Chet B'Av, the eighth of Av, which is uh, usually it's the day before Tisha B'Av. This year Tisha B'Av falls on Shabbat, so Tisha B'Av is the Chuit, the tenth of Av, which is the Sunday coming up. Shabbat Shalom. Tonight is the Hilulav, two great Sadikim. Rabbi Shimon ben Rabbi Aaron Agassi, who was the friend and kind of like a Rebbe, Tamit Chaver, to, to review Daftaye, and uh, also the Yorzeh Rav Yitzchak Zilber, who affectionately was known as one of the Lamed of Tzadikim, a big Tzadik, uh, who went through a lot of uh, suffering in uh, Soviet Union Russia. It's a famous book to remain a Jew, a book that I read from cover to cover more than once. The Misirut Nefesh that he had for Torah was legendary, legendary. Till today, his yeshiva is run by a son of Ben Zion Zibar. I think it's called uh, Toldot Yishurun. Uh, so it's a very big thing to remember that Tzadikim, especially the day of their passing where their Ha'ara is open in this world. But see, I want to talk about Bishimon Agassi, not a lot, 10 minutes about who was this great man, Rabbi Shimon Agassi, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ben Ishai in Sode Yisharim in uh, Raf Pa'alim, the book of questions and answers. The Ben Ishai used to call him, uh, I believe, Maharsha, Maharsha, uh, which is one of the greatest Ashkenazi poskim, a hundred years uh, before him. One of the biggest learn we learned the Maharsha and the Gemara I used to call Rav Shimon Agassi Moreno Harav Rabbi Shimon Agassi Maharsha or Shadol Maharsha. Uh, others used to call him Rashba Rabbeinu Shimon Ben Aharon. The Rashba was one of the greatest Rishonim. He's, he got to such a level that they used to call him such. He was a Rosh Shiva. He was also a uh, he, was, he was a worker. Rabbi Shimon Agassi. He's he's mostly known for his work on Shara Gilgulim. Uh, the gates of reincarnation, the Tachachmei Yerushalayim, used to say in Kubalei Yerushalayim, if he would have written a perush on all of Etz Chaim, they would have left everybody else's perush and just learned his. His perush on uh, Shara Gilgulim, gates of reincarnation, if anybody hears my gates of reincarnation, Shiurim, I use a lot, I rely heavily on him. Uh, it's one of the most most important, but at the same time, clear, it was a very, it's a very clear Shiur. The, way, the reason he wrote it, uh, the, how it came to be was his son uh, died uh, I think the night before or on the night of his wedding and his son's name was Aharon and then he had another son that died and uh, he was heartbroken he never accepted comfort from, for his son's death his son was supposed to be this big Talmud Chacham and his son's name was Aharon uh, when he died the famous story was that he was so heartbroken from his son's death. You know, imagine your son is dying on the night of the wedding, and the whole uh, the bad the whole community in Baghdad were heartbroken. We were they were going crazy. Like how could such a thing happen to a tzaddik? It's supposed to be tzaddik vetovlo. How is it tzaddik veralo? It's a famous question. Everybody has this question in their life. How does a tzaddik suffer in life? And uh, until the Benish Hai himself got up and gave a drasha and the hesped. The eulogy and he said we don't understand but everything works by Gilgulim that's the real answer that's the answer that God gave Eov I have a book uh, Torah to Adam the, of the Ramban Nachmanides we're talking 800 years ago and he has a perush on, on Job on Eov and he says if you look at the perush you don't understand when God's talking to God is talking to Eov to Job you don't understand what's his answer to Job at the end and he says, and, and uh, the Ramban himself says, God told Eov, you don't know who your reincarnation is. It's in the book, Sefer Shara Gmul, of the Ramban. Chachamim knew that everything is based on their reincarnation. And they said that uh, Rabbi Udaftaye told of Shimon Agassi that his sons that died were the Nitzotzot from the Shorosh Nisham of Nadav and Avihu. And then he got a little bit comfort. For what happened, like he knew that Nishamut had come from that shorish for some for they, they die early. They die as a korban to Hashem. And uh, when when Rabbi Shimon Agassi he had a so his his son's wife, she was a she was a you know teenager and she was she needed a yibum now because he had a younger son. 
I think his name was Ezra Tzion. The last time I was in Israel, there's a chut talim by his, by his camera. It was a big bat tzedakah. And uh, he told her, well, I'm so sorry you have to wait now for chalitza because when a woman is married, is a, married or about to get married, she's at least irusin. She, she got the, you know, engagement according to halacha. She has to now wait for yibum or chalitza. And the boy is young and she's like 10, 15 years older than him. And she said to him, I'm not going to do chalitza. I'm going to do yibum. I want to do the mitzvah of Yibum. We're talking 120 years ago. The Sfaradim always kept Yibum. It was only when we got to Israel, they stopped doing love right marriage because of the whole thing with Ashkenazim that they didn't do it. And what happened was that he blessed her that she should always have eyesight and her teeth should never fall. And I heard from one of my rabbis that until not long ago she was alive and she lived in Yerushalayim and she was perfectly fine until the last day of her life. Rabbi Shimon blessed her with long life. And she was healthy. So Rabbi Shimon, he passed through a very hard life. Uh, I'm going to say one story about him. We know that his, his friend, his best friend, was Rabbi Udaftai. Uh, Rabbi Udaftai, we don't have to talk about him. He was uh, the giant of the giants. There's a book called Sefer Chizyonot, the visions that Rabbi Udaftai had on Rabbi Shimon Agassi. I want to say one story that more the Haileya used to say about Rabbi Shimon Agassi. Rabbi Shimon Agassi used to make uh, money selling uh, detergent, detergent. Back then the detergent was blue. So it had certain blue chemical in it. Rabbi Shimon used to open up his story, he was Rosh Hashiva too. So he used to open up his story, he used to work for two, three hours a day. He was the only store in the block, in the bazaar. One day, some Arabs saw, I was like, listen, he's the only guy, he's making good money. He sells for so much more than what it's worth. We're gonna sell for half of the price, a third of the price, we're still gonna make a profit. That's what they did. One day, Rabbi Shimon goes to the bazaar, he opens up the store, nobody's coming to buy. He wait, wait, he sees one hour, nobody's coming, two hours, nobody's coming. Closes his shop, goes to yeshiva, nobody's coming, what's the point? And he used to, by the way, support the yeshiva too. That means with his story, he used to also use the Rosh Yeshiva and the supporter of the yeshiva. What happened? He finds out that the Arabs got together and they decided to open up a store across the shuk, selling the same thing for a third of the price. He didn't say anything. Next uh, day, he comes to the, to the bazaar, to the store, to the shuk. And he sees everybody's going crazy. What happened? What happened? Everybody who bought the detergent from the Arabs, same detergent, same thing, all their clothes turned out blue. The blue chemical in it, for some reason, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't go inside the water, it didn't mix well with the water, but it was the same thing, and it all stained everyone's clothes. They're fighting with the Arabs, we want our money back. They all go to Rabbi Shimon, we're sorry we didn't buy from you, we're sorry we didn't do this. The Arabs were going crazy. They took him to court. So the judge asked him, how did you sell people such bad detergent? So I, we promised you we bought the same thing he sold, he bought. So they brought Rabbi Shimon and says, how come your detergent work and theirs did it? He said, I don't know. We have a known thing in Judaism. When a person wants to take away somebody else's parnasa, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't take away anybody's parnasa. And if somebody wants to take somebody else's part in a sack, Adosh Baruch Hu makes sure not only is he not going to gain, he's also going to lose. So the judge said because of that, he told the Arabs, whatever money he lost, because he lost that day of work, you got to pay him. So Rabbi Shimon said, listen, I, he couldn't say to the Arab judge, I can't take Goyim's money. You're not allowed to take Goyim's money, especially in public. You're So he said, I can't take their money, but if they want to give for the yeshiva, for the sake of upholding the yeshiva. For this, we can take the money to uphold the yeshiva, but not as a sense of tzedakah, but there you have to buy from me my schora, my merchandise, and then they could sell it. It means if they want to sell the detergent, they have to buy it from me for the price that I want. And from that money that they're gonna spend, I'm gonna use it for the yeshiva, and that's what happened at the end. And it was a big miracle inside Baghdad, and it was a big kiddush Hashem. That's just one small story about the Kedushah. This is a rabbi that lived 120 years ago. What's interesting, Rabbi Daftai said when he passed away, when the Ben Ishai passed away, the Ben Ishai's son was the rabbi of the shul, Rabbi Yaakov. But Rabbi Shimon was the leader of Baghdad Jewry. Unfortunately, he passed away not long after the Ben Ishai. 
and they found in his Pinkas, in his notebook, that he knew the exact day when he was gonna pass away, Ched Be'av. He wrote over there, Ched Be'av. And when he passed away, there was big uh, tsarot in Baghdad. Big tsarot, they took the Jewish uh, boys to the army, to the Ottoman uh, army, to fight the British. It was a big balagan. And Rabbi Udaftai writes in his Hagdamata Etz Hayim, that uh, the only way to stop the tsarot is to learn uh, Torah Hasod. To learn Etz Hayim, to learn Otrot Hayim, to learn it and to know it, and to live by it. And Rabbi uh, Udaftai had a chidush. He said, when somebody comes to learn Etz Hayim, Otrot Hayim, you never throw him away. The limud itself, when it, it, it's alive and it feels if a person is not worthy, he kicks him out himself. And that was their shita, that was Rabbi Udaftai's shita and all the chayim of Baidah. When a person wants to come to learn, you have to let him learn. Of course, it doesn't mean you should not learn Gemara, this, you should also learn this. And you should know what's the Pnimiyut Torah. So, Zichut of the Baal Bnei Aaron and Shargil Gulim, Zichut of Rehud Aftai, the Bnei Shchai, and their Rebbe, Rav Abdallah Somech, Yagin Aleinu Akol Am Yisrael. It's a very big thing to do a Hilula for this Tzaddik, which nobody does because it's during the nine days, can't eat meat. But I want to give a blessing to anybody who's going to listen to this and is going to light a candle for Chacham Rabbi Shimon Ben Rabbi Aaron Abba Agassi. And Rabbi Tzach Zilbert, and anybody who listens, may the Zuchud of Tzadik be on you. And also the Zuchud of our cameraman over here that stayed afterwards, to, after our Mishnah Yoshir to, to report this, that he, you know, is always putting up the Torah. The Zuchud of Rabbi Shimon be on him. For all of our Mishnah anybody who listens, anybody who shares, a big mitzvah. To remember Zechor Yemot Olam, as I always say in my shirim, it's a mitzvah from the Torah. Remember the days of old. Zechor Yemot Olam, Bin Yishnu Dor Vador. It's a mitzvah from the Torah, according to some people's scheme, to learn Jewish history, to know your history, to know, to, to know what being a Jew is all about. That's what the Tisha B'Av is all about. What are we mourning for? We're mourning for because something not that happened, something that is happening, because Jewish history is is a uh, something that keeps on repeating itself. It's something that always happens year after year. And if we don't get the Beit HaMikdash this year, it just means that the Chorban happened again this year. That's what we say in the Tikkun Hatzot. Kol dor shelo nivna Beit HaMikdash be'yamav, kilu nechra be'yamav. See our son should be zokhe this year to finally see Binyan Beit HaMikdash, Mashiach Tzidkenu, have Ahavat Yisrael, and take away all the Sinat Hinam, zokhe lekol ha-yushot, lekol ha-brachot, lekol ha-zol ha-kamash shkintah ma'afaya, v'ruch Adonai le'olam. Amen, amen, thank you for listening. 